it better be up there. Or we'll be too. <laughs> I gotta look up there. Two. Two. Jesus. Get over there. <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna say I don't like it over here either.
Good evening. Praise the Lord. You know, we are here to praise the Lord. We're glad you're here tonight. This is the last night of our revival. So, you know, if you come out tomorrow night, George won't be here. Uh, but hasn't it been great? Yes. It's been great to, to hear uh, Evangelist Holly. And it's been wonderful to have Little Darby Creek with us all week. Uh, they're probably not going to be here tomorrow night either. It's time to have a song. Good evening. Good evening. Well, apparently y'all didn't like my side. <laughs> yes, we converted three. <laughs> y'all moved back over there. I have to say it was a little weird up here because, you know, this side was full. And <laughs> it was a little weird yesterday. But praise the Lord you're here tonight and we're thankful. And I'm like Richard. You know, it's been a wonderful week, and I've really needed this. I think, a lo I think our church needed it, and I'm sad to see it end. Because, you know, we want that presence of the Lord. We want his glory. And when you get it, you want more. So, just so thankful tonight that you're here, and I'm here, and I love the Lord tonight. And aren't you glad for the day that he saved you? Amen. Oh, that was weak. Aren't you glad that for the day that he saved you? Amen. Amen. There's nothing greater than that. Okay. On, let's stand and let's sing. Let's never shall forget the day that he saved us. I am singing the wrong song. <laughs> I never shall forget the day when every burden from my heart was thrown away. It made me happy, glad and free. I'll sing and shout it for you. Everything tonight, he is my everything. And the song says, I'll shout it and sing it. And I asked Jonathan last night if he knew I speak Jesus. And he said he didn't. I don't know if he listened to it or not. But you know, that's become our theme song, if we could say that around here. When I first heard this song, I thought, Lord, we need to speak your name. You know, we 
need to tell the world. We need to shout it. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. Jesus. 
broken for Uvalde, Texas. Yes. Those sweet children and that teacher. I'm telling you, our nation needs Jesus. Amen. I think right now it'd be appropriate if we come and we pray for our nation. If you feel so led to come forward, we'll sing a second song, a second verse or chorus or something. If you want to come forward and pray for our nation, let's do that tonight.
salvation to you. Lord, we pray that you would help us. Help us as your people, Lord, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways. Because we know, Lord, then you will hear us from heaven. You will forgive our sins and you will heal our land. Oh God, work in a mighty way in our nation, we pray. We pray for a great awakening among our leaders, those in the deep state that want to rule our nation in a wicked way. Lord, we lift up all those athletes, those in Hollywood, all those who are influential in our nation, Lord. Pray that they would come to you. Lord, be with our children, our teenagers, our young adults. Oh, God, draw them to yourself. Father, we pray for the people of Uvalde, Texas. Comfort those, Lord, who have lost loved ones. May they sense your presence in a very real way. Lord, we pray even for the family of the shooter. Oh, God. They're suffering just as well, just as much. And Father, we just pray that out of this tragedy, you would bring healing, and there would be beauty that comes from those ashes. Draw people to yourself in Uvalde, Texas, we pray. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. This side is so full. <laughs> At least I got George back on my side. I thought you needed that inspiration. Brother. I did. I did. I am so glad you're here tonight. And the sad thing is, this is our last night of scheduled meetings. I heard Richard say to somebody, if you come, well, I guess he did at the beginning of the service, if you come tomorrow night, you'll probably be by yourself. No, if you come tomorrow night, we'll just be ready to keep on going, won't we? (laughs) We've had a tremendous week, a tremendous blessing in so many ways. And not only do I want to thank, and we've already claimed Little Darby Creek is ours. They're, They're welcome here anytime, and we appreciate their ministry and what God is doing in their lives. And uh, then... We're, they're going to come and sing in just a moment. But have you enjoyed their singing tonight? Just yeah. say amen. <laughs> amen. And then Reverend George Holly, I told you at the beginning Sunday morning that I'd heard him on CD, loved every sermon I heard him preach. Mom thinks he walks on water. <laughs> and uh, I think he does. Um, at least like Peter. (laughs) And uh, my, how the word has spoken to us this week and how challenged we've been and how blessed we've been. And uh, George, we're just going to claim you too. You're close enough to even come here all the time. Just don't don't get too much in here. They'll they'll cast me out. (laughs) But it has been wonderful this week, and, and the blessing we've received through what God's given us. And then I want to thank all of you from other churches yes, that have come. Yes. What a blessing. Um, we were talking, and I've got I to not say too much here, because I, I, want, I don't want to hinder what God wants to say to us tonight. But uh, we were talking, somebody and I were talking about the days when churches really came together. Uh, Joe, you can remember when the Church of Christ and Christian Union, every revival they had, people from all over would come. And uh, we appreciate the fact that people have come this week and that you've blessed us more than you can know. The spirit you've brought is just what we needed, and we are thankful for that. And our folks, thank you for being here. Amen. 
I'm so grateful for the people of Cornerstone. You just don't know. Uh, they are such a blessing. And I appreciate them and their faithfulness. There were several people that wanted to be here, um, not the least of which was Bill and Bill, Jim and Betty Anderson, who had found out Sunday morning they had COVID. And uh, so we want to pray for them. I know and appreciate Joe being here. His brother, Frank, is uh, very near death, not doing well at all. And we need to pray for him. So grateful for that spirit that Frank has, that he knows the Lord and have no doubt about it. And then I, uh, Wilma Yoder, I want you all to remember her in prayer as well. She's found out she's got to go through some things coming up and just pray for her. She, she was here Monday night and, uh, or Sunday night, and, and she uh, um, gave me a big hug. <laughs> so that was worth something, wasn't it? Hey, man. Well, I'm going to get out of the way. Y'all didn't come to hear me tonight, and the Lord has already been here, and what a wonderful joy it is. By the way, on the way out, there are offering uh, boxes back there, and if you'd like to give to Little Darby Creek or to George, uh, and you can hand it to them, by the way, too. You don't have to have to wait till you put it in the box because we may not be able to unlock the box. <laughs> But if you'd like, if we can, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But if you'd like to give to their ministries and, and especially uh, to just say thank you, that would be an honor to just hand that on over to them as well. So, and we're, I'm going to get out of the way now. Jonathan, you better get up here. I'm going to keep on talking. <laughs> say that we do this for fun. It's not for fun, but this is our hobby. It's different. And then this is my last chance to pick on him probably for a while. So I wanted to let him know I've been paying attention this week. So Sunday morning I learned that it is not good to drink while golfing because even a social drink on hole one, you can't see hole 18 when you get there. And then we went from that to, on a good walk, he makes 26 to 27 cents, if I remember right. And then on Monday night, I learned it is not good to be anybody's right-hand man, because you will get trampled. And then last night, Mark, I hope your, your congregation didn't get this, but it sounds like we can actually just watch the tabernacle from our doorway. And never come to church anymore, so. Um, There's a lot of good. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you take such a uh, <laughs> I am sure I will pay for all of that in about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> he will unleash, and it will all be at me, but that's okay. Um, if, it's at, if it's at me, that means he's leaving you alone. So uh, I got, uh, in case you didn't notice, I have broad shoulders. So, um. <laughs> But no, we've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, not going to lie, as uh, I said last night, am, am I tired? I am. Um, but it was well worth it. it yes. You know, there's, there's times you do stuff and you're exhausted. You get done and like, why did I ever get in the middle of that? This is not one of those occasions. Yeah. This is one of those that, I don't know how you guys are, but after a good service, you go back home and it, it's hard to go to sleep right away. You know, you start like thinking back through what was said, what was done, what happened. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll do uh, a few things here, and uh, I, w I promised I would introduce the group tonight, so this could get interesting. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. We're going to start off one with, uh, I even like thought about this, I better read through all the words on our songs after George talked yeah. about even <laughs> one line, yeah. which I do try to watch that usually, but sometimes things slip by in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go a step further than George. 
this will get me kicked out. You will never ask us back. Um, it's, well, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's a song that is just so popular, at least in more of a southern gospel look, over the years and years and years that I've always, every time it's sung, and I've had to play it, George, for many people, because they just start singing it, and you're like, well, I can't, I won't have to worry anymore. I, I got you, bro. <laughs> and every time I'm like, hmm. Why well, now? Yeah, why, exactly. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to act like I never worry, because it does happen. But to sit there and go, well, I'm not going to have to. Well, I don't have to now. But anyway, the first song we're going to do. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's, we'll leave that to you. Um, we're going to do one that's by a group. And I, I really can't tell you much about the group. They're called We the Kingdom. You may have heard of them, may not have. Um, but they, they have an interesting way that they play songs. And we like to play interesting things. I will tell you this. If you ever go look it up, the name of the song is Child of Love. But we changed it. We changed it to Child of God. I don't know why they didn't say Child of God, but it bothered me the first time I heard it. I love the song. I'm like, ah, don't say love, say God. So, but this is a crowd participation song. I'm going to start off and I'm going to say, let me hear you say, yeah. Guess what I need you to do? Yeah. 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 And then let me hear you say, oh. Oh. So when we do that, uh, we're doing it a couple times during the song. Hopefully you'll repeat that and uh, it'll go flawlessly. If yeah. not, we're just gonna look like idiots. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to unmute? Yeah. I can't help you to unplug your guitar in thirty minutes. <laughs> One, two, three. Let me hear you say yeah. 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 Oh, oh, I am a child of God. Let me hear you say yeah.
next night they asked me again, what's the girl's name? And the next night, you know, so um, we'll, we'll try to get that out of the way. Uh, we'll start on the drums over there. Um, this is a gentleman that I um, uh, went to school with. He's a, he was a year younger than me. Um, and then we uh, later on met up in church and started playing together. And then we started doing the family tree and realized we're cousins. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but we are related. And um, so his name is Larry Lester. And uh, beside him is uh, a guy that um, we started playing with when we were in Hayden. And uh, somebody else, you know, had come into church and was singing with us and said, hey, I know this, uh, this electric guitar player. And we've been praying for quite a few years for somebody to send somebody. And so uh, he shows up and I said, how about he'll come out on, I don't know if it's a Sunday afternoon, whatever it was. And so she said, uh, I'll have him come out. And so. It was just me, and uh, her name was Mickey, and so here comes Brady, and he comes in pushing this half-stack amp that's, I don't know, from back in the 70s or something. He's got all this stuff, and I'll be honest, Randy, I looked at it, and I'm like, this probably ain't going to go well. <laughs> so he gets up there, and he's just kind of just playing some cute chords, and all of a sudden I said, do you know this song? And it was Go Rest High. Um, I said, and he goes, yeah, I think I do. Well, he took off. And Mickey, the person that brought him in, she looked at him, she goes, well, I've never heard you play like that before. And so uh, his marriage made in heaven right there, wasn't it, Randy? So uh, we've played together ever since then. Yeah. And uh, so that's Randy Elliott. His brother is usually with us. Um, he plays, his brother, actually Randy plays multiple instruments as well. But his brother, Sean, was when he was with us the other night, he plays banjo and mandolin. But he can play acoustic, he can play bass, he can play a steel guitar, he, he can drums, he's He's multi-talented, but um, he was with us Sunday, uh, wasn't able to make it back the rest of the week, and then um, we will get to, hmm, do I let, yeah, I'm going to let him do it, so. Yeah, no, no. I'm not doing it anymore. Oh, you're not doing it now. Okay, I'll leave. I got to say something? Okay, I'll say something, but all week long, she's like, let me hear it introduce her. I'm going to take care of it tonight. So, so here we are. Nope, not doing it. Anyway. So it is pretty funny that uh, a lot of times we're out, a lot of people, Larry asks if these are my girls, and they're not. Larry and I did not have these two children. Um, there's a funny story behind that, too. Uh, yeah. When we first started practicing, we hadn't played out anywhere, and Kendall was just learning the bass, and we'd go into a music store, and I started playing a bass, and we really liked it. And I said, Larry, let's, let's get this bass for Kendall. So we go up to the counter. It was a it was a name. Uh, George, I don't know if you've looked at it. The name of that bass is a Fred Render. Um, and so I'm like, well, that would be good right there, right? So um, so I knew nothing about the brand, but I knew that it played really good, and I liked the sound of it. So we take it up, and the salespeople are, there's like three of them there. I'm like, oh, you guys are buying right here. Man, this is a great bass. And like, yeah, we had, um, Kendall was like eight at the time. I said, yeah, we got an eight-year-old girl. And they go, you're buying this bass for and we realized when we walked away from the store, we kind of made it sound like she was our daughter. And um, I said, we got to be careful how we do this in the future. So, but on the end, let's see, I, I forget, are you 10 now? You're 11 now? You just turned 11? You just turned 11. So, Kendall plays this, of course, she's seen her play fiddle, and she's learning flute in the school band. But this is Larry and, and Sherry, his wife. This is their youngest daughter, Kendall. Beside, um, and we call her Precious, by the way. Um, <laughs> princess, I, well, I'm Precious, Princess, whatever. Is she smiling um, right now? Or? She barely <laughs> is, almost, <laughs> almost. I got one more funny story, but this is my favorite story to tell about Kendall, other than these two. So they seem really sweet up here on stage. In practice, they fight like cats and dogs. I mean, fist flying and fighting. And I'm not going to tell you which one that wins, but it's not this one. Um, <laughs> But, so, we learned a song, and we changed some of the words in it, um, you know, a couple years ago, and I changed, I'm going to see if George knows what this is, I changed the words to R.C. and a Moon Pie. You ever heard of R.C. and a Moon Pie? Well, need to say, that's before the girls' time. Yeah. So they went out and bought them an R.C. and a Moon Pie, and we took that to one of the assisted livings, and we gave some of that stuff away to the people. We got done, we're packing up all our equipment. Kendall is nowhere to be found. And we're like, where is Kendall? We go out, 
she is in the truck eating moon pies. <laughs> and she just be just one after another, just in there eating moon pies. So, uh, Technically so, a half one. A half one, yeah. that's why you got done. So anyway. Uh, but anyway, this is her older sister who just turned 14. Um, she's very talented as well. She plays piano, she plays um, acoustic guitar, she plays uh, mandolin, and probably could play anything that you wanted. She has a banjo, but she leaves it at my house. But every once in a while, she'll sneak over and play it. So, but this is their oldest daughter, Brielle. And then my name is Jonathan Webb. It, um, we are thrilled to be here this week. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, it's been our privilege. And George, you've done a tremendous job. Thank you, Thank you for reminding the Holy Spirit. You kept telling us that. And it's the same way with, with a preacher. Because yeah. when they don't, it goes a long time, and you get nothing out of it. So, But um, it's, been a, it's been a great week. Um, so we got two more songs we'll do. This one... Um, this one's a, it was actually a bluegrass song. I heard this song when I was plowing snow, um, which, I don't know, I only had to plow like twice this winter. And so in the driveway, and I'm plowing, and it came on the radio, and you may not like it at all. It's a very plain and simple song. It's by a guy by the name of Larry Sparks. But uh, I'll start off on the keyboard just so we get the rhythm, and then I'll let you guys take over. But six to eight, right? Here. Six to eight. First words he said all week right there. <laughs> The Lord is born. 
When I think of that song, uh, yeah, that first verse talks about I woke up early this morning, somewhere about three, and um, you know, I, I never thought I'd be, be this way, but the older I get, the more I wake up, and like, man, I wish I could sleep all night long again. But what I found out is I wake up and a lot of times I just start praying. Whatever comes to my mind, I pray and, and finally I'll, I'll just drift back off to sleep again. So I try to use that time wisely. And so uh, got one last song we'll do. I will tell you this much. There are flyers on our table if anybody's interested. We, um, you know, I, I said for those that know us, we, we don't do many public appearances. We mainly sing in assisted living and, and retirement homes. But we have a couple coming up outside this revival. So on June 11th, um, Hayden, where we came, you know, originally was from, Hayden Enterprise Baptist Church, they're having an outdoor singing on June 11th, starting at 6, is that right? Yeah, 6 o'clock. So if you guys want to come out and join in, um, bring lawn chair, there's no admission, and you can show up to that. And then on July 15th, we will be playing um, after the Steam Freshers Parade here in town at the fair. Um, so it'll be on the main stage. It's over by the pool for those that's uh, um, familiar with that area. But they've asked us to come in, and as the parade kind of wraps up, then we'll kick off and we're closing out the evening for them. So it's kind of a special thing we get to do. I believe I looked up online. I think it costs five dollars to get in. I don't know if you go that late that they charge. I have no idea. I'm assuming that you probably want to take some seating. I don't know if they have seating, but. You know, if anybody's around, you want to come up to the scene pressures. Um, kind of interesting thing, but uh, we're looking forward to that. So, outside of that, we we actually have no other public events uh, scheduled so far this year. Um, but we're gonna do one last one, and uh, I seen uh, uh, I seen Greg out back there. Where I didn't you slipped in on me, and um, Kyla wrote this one. And I figure what a way to end a revival with a Kyla song, and so uh, hopefully uh, we're gonna do this. In We'll get out of the way. Again, Mark, thank you. George, thank you. Church, thank you. Um, we've enjoyed it. One last funny thing I'll say is, uh, George, earlier today, it uh, wasn't funny that we, we, we had to play the, a funeral today, me and Larry and Randy. And at the funeral, I said, you know, I said, I said, how you doing, Larry? He goes, I'm just tired. I said, me too. I said, do you think George would mind while he's preaching if we start tearing down our equipment so that when he wraps up, we're done too? We figured that probably wouldn't be the best thing to do, but um, the thought did enter my mind. Did I mention
Well, praise the Lord. What a week it's been. It's been a wonderful time of the presence of the Lord, and I appreciate that. It's, uh, you don't always sense that everywhere you go, so I'm thankful that the Lord has graciously met with us here this week. Thank you for extending the invitation to me to come and be with you, and what a treat it's been to be with uh, little Darby Creek. I, we've never been together before, but I hope it's not the only time we ever get together. And uh, thank you, as already been said, those of you that have come in from other churches, you have been such an encouragement to us and, and, and a boost to the meeting, and you've been part of the reason why the services have been the way that they have, and, and only eternity will tell the full extent of what's really been accomplished. I've had to learn a long time ago, you can't base it all on just what you see around the altar, because I know there's a lot of stuff happens right there in the pew, commitments that are made, and uh, promises made to the Lord that, I, I, that only people, only they know. So we just do what God lays on our heart and leave the results up to him, amen? And so uh, last night I shared with you I wanted to preach a different message and the Holy Spirit wouldn't let me and we had to go the direction that we did. And the same thing, I still wanted to preach the message tonight that I wanted to preach last night and, and I couldn't get a green light from the Lord to do it. So you're just stuck with tonight's message as well. I, I've also learned, I just don't have any better sense than to mind God. I have found out that minding God works out a whole lot better than minding me. Amen. And Brother Mark, let your mom know that I do not walk on water. And uh, I, I have a hard time treading water. But if she wants to know, my mother-in-law has been living with me since November. So she can verify, I do not walk on water, okay? So anyway, uh, and I can verify I'm the best son-in-law she has, so. Uh, I can say that because the other one's not here. But <laughs> so anyway, thank you again for this. If you want to keep up with our ministry, uh, some of you are friends with us on Facebook. If you want to be a friend of us on Facebook, George Holly, or I have another page, George Holly Evangelistic Ministries. And if you want to see where we're going to be, uh, you can look us up on our website, georgeholly.org. And when you go to that website, you can click on the schedule tab, and it has our entire schedule on there. Some meetings out as far as 2027, and this year, is pretty much full now through the, through the first week of December, and we're thankful for that. And so uh, if, you, if you drop in on a service that we're at, uh, let us know you're there. And don't come up to me and say, do you remember me? <laughs> uh, come up to me and say, I know you from, I was in revival with you at uh, Cornerstone 3 CU. Then that will help me remember you, okay? So anyway... Thank you again. Would you bow your head with me for prayer? Father in heaven, thank you tonight for the way you've met with us. Thank you for the songs, not only during the time of worship, but the special songs as well. Thank you for bringing us together like this, for friends that we've got to be with again and, and be reacquainted with, and Lord, for new friends that we've had the privilege to make this week. I I really believe that. But Lord, we are also so thankful that we discover part of the family of God that we never knew before. And we're glad the family of God is so much bigger than our little corner of the world. And so, Father, I pray your blessings upon this church. I pray that the spirit of revival would continue long after this service tonight. I pray you'd be with Pastor Mark and Debbie, that you'd help them. Uh, Lord, as they continue to shepherd this flock, give them fruit for their labors. I pray that you would just uh, help this church to continue 
to be a lighthouse to this community where you've placed them. I pray your blessings upon Little Darby Creek and continue to use them and open doors for them, Lord, to share their ministry. Lord, help us tonight. May the Spirit of God move freely among us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians, chapter number 5. Ephesians, chapter number 5. We're going to pick up the reading at verse number 15. I want to call your attention to five verses tonight, but we're going to be looking at several other verses. Book of Ephesians, chapter 5 beginning at verse 15. The rustling of the pages is slowing down. I hope that means you found it. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. The Apostle Paul, writing to these Gentile converts, the Ephesian believers, And many of us are familiar with a lot of the different verses in this book of the various chapters. Many of you remember as youngsters maybe learning part of chapter 6 when we were told to put on the whole armor of God and we learned about the various armor, the various pieces of the armor of God. But before we get to that verse of the chapter about the armor of God, the Apostle Paul reminds them that there is something else that is very important and very necessary before we even go out in the battle and don the armor of God. And he says to them here in verse number 15, he uses a conjunctive phrase. Do you folks need some help there? Someone need to help her there? That's all right, no problem. We got some medical personnel. Good. Let's bow, would you? Father in heaven, we come to you tonight on behalf of this dear one. Lord, we don't know what's going on, but do you do. We lift her up to you. Pray, Lord, for your divine touch and intervention right now on this situation. Lord, we give this to you, and we pray, Lord, that you would be with them and help them and help her in a special way right now. In the name of Jesus, we ask, amen, amen. Thank you, brother.
next few moments, if you could stay in your seats, the medical personnel are going to be coming through here probably, so we want to give them the aisle way to get through.
No apology needed. Can't help that, brother. you. We'll be praying for you. Well, we never know. We never know what another moment will bring. And uh, all the more reason why we know whatever the next moment brings that we know we're right with God. If that would have been any number of people, it would have been an end-of-life situation some folks would be out into eternity and without any chance of getting right with God at all. And so that's just how quickly we know that things can change in our lives. I think about, I know the concern that there was and with the prayer we had about the situation with the school in Texas and the shooting there so near the end of a school year, and yet an entire class goes out into eternity and a couple of adults with them, and it just, it's just hard to comprehend. And you think about those first responders that went into that mess, and one of which found out that his child was among those that had been shot, and it just, I can't imagine what that would be like. But folks, Life is too short 
and eternity is too long not to be ready for it. You don't have to be old. You don't even have to be, have a terminal illness. There's just so much out there that can take us out of here. We need to live every moment like it'd be our last. Because one moment it will be. And the only thing that's going to matter at that time is our relationship with Jesus Christ. If there is anybody here tonight that does not have a right relationship with the Lord, it could be that this whole service has shifted just to call attention to that brevity, that moment of something could happen. And are we prepared? Are we prepared? And if you're not, the Lord has been faithful every service in this meeting. And uh, I believe the Holy Spirit has been faithful to deal with hearts. I don't, I don't know you folks, a few of you I know, but I don't know all the spiritual needs. But I'm convinced in the crowds of size that we've been having that there are spiritual needs in the crowd. People that have never given their heart to the Lord. People who maybe at one time, but as I preached the other day, just got careless with their soul and with their walk with God. Been drifting as that prodigal son in a far country and such like. Tonight would be a good night just to settle things. I, I could, I'm prepared to preach a message, but I don't think it's necessary right now. And for those of you that drove in for that, I apologize for that, and I'm, I'm willing to come back tomorrow night to preach, but, if it, uh, but I can't answer for everybody else. But I just want to be obedient to the Lord. It would be a little bit counterproductive now, I think, because I think, for one, some, some minds are distracted, but at the same time, some hearts have been pricked and alerted and alarmed because it could be you slumped over in a church pew. And what, where would you be spiritually if it were? What kind of peace would your family have with uncertainty of a medical emergency like that? Would they be wondering? Have you left behind a clear testimony that would give them peace in that situation to know that if they wouldn't recover from the medical emergency, we know where they're at and we're making plans to join them? As I also shared earlier this week that just as sure as there's a heaven to gain, there's a hell to shun. Everybody that dies does not automatically go to heaven. Only those that have a right relationship with Jesus. Do you know that you have a right relationship with Jesus? I'd rather pray for you about spiritual things than I would pray about physical things. But I'm glad I know one who's not only master of the sea, but he's master of the spiritual realm and physical realm. Amen? I'm glad I know him. Do you know him? Anybody have a testimony you want to share? Has the Lord laid something on your heart? The altar's available if you want to pray. Do you need to pray?
Amen.